Hi guys, um, welcome back to your Google Foundation online classroom. Um, today we'll be looking at uh, functions, functions and graph. Uh, at the end of the chapter on your final examination, these functions will have about 35 marks out of 150. And then in percentages, it's about 23%. So let me take you through my presentation. Okay. Now, this, this is the graph. I said we are doing functions. Okay, here you've got apples. This is sort of your machine. So your inputs or your X values, the pure apples. So when you put them through the machine, you have got apple pieces this side. So you can make your juice this side. Okay, that's what we will be doing today. But our main fun our main topic today it will be linear function which are called straight line and quadratic functions and focus of the lesson is we look at the introduction some sort of a revision um, and then we'll look at what is a function or definition of a function and then we'll also look at the linear function or the straight line function We'll also look at the quadratic function, some they call it parabolic functions. And then we'll also look at the very important um, combination of a straight line and a quadratic function, solving those uh, problems. Okay, now let's do some revision from grade eight and nine, okay, and some primary stuff. Okay, suppose here, uh, find the output values which are y values below. So you are given your x values, which are domains here. And then this is inside, you have got a rule. And then you have to get your y values. So here, suppose your rule is 2x minus 1. So suppose you substitute negative 1 here. In the place of x, you have 2 multiplied by negative 1 minus 1. And then which will give you negative 3. And then when you put substitute 1 here, it will be 2 multiplied by 1 which is two minus one, which is one, okay? And then in the case of three, it would be two multiplied by three, which is six, six minus one is five, okay? Now let's complete the table below. Your function or your rule is f of x is equal to seven x. So in place of x, you substitute negative one. Here you're going to have negative seven, zero, and then seven, 21, when you substitute three, and then when you substitute five, you've got about 35. Okay, now guys, let's look. <clears throat> types of graphs. Okay, types of graph, we have got number one, which is function, and then we've got number two, which is non-function. Okay, now you will agree with me that definition of a function a function is a relationship between x and y, whereby for every x value or for every one x value, there is only one y value. Okay, so now let's look at this diagram here. It says that for x value, x value will be mapped onto one y value, which is true according to the definition. And then another one x value, it can be mapped onto the same y value, right? In case of a parabolic uh, function. And then you've got also one value which is mapped onto one value. Okay. Now, definition of a function. You've got types of functions. You've got types of functions. For example, you've got one on one to one function here it means that you are each x value has a unique y value for example straight line and inverse of straight line hyperbolic functions and inverse of hyperbolic function exponential function and inverse of a 
exponential function, which is logarithmic function. Okay, you have got many to one. Here, it means that more than one x value is being mapped onto the same y value. Okay, for example, here you can have, you can have, um, let's say x is one being mapped onto four, and then you can have maybe three also being mapped onto four. For example, you've got parabolic, some trig functions, and some cubic functions. Okay, now, definition of non-function. Definition of a non-function. So that is a function which is not a function. Okay, one to many. That's why by one x value has more than one y value. In other words, when x value is being mapped onto more than y value. For example, you have got x value here, or your input, which is being mapped onto your y value. And then you've got also the same value, which is being mapped onto different y value. And then we can also have a case whereby one value is being mapped onto different y value. So for example, you've got inverse of a parabolic function. So inverse of a parabolic function is not a function. So, but we'll talk about it in, in part two of this video, whereby we're trying to make this inverse of a parabolic function a function. We call it, we have to restrict the domain. That's why we restrict the x values. Now let's look at how to test if a graph is a function or not. In other words, how to test if a graph is a function or non-function. Okay, we use what you call a tool, which is called, use a vertical line test, right? A vertical line test is just a line that you draw, you know, vertically so. Now, listen here, you've got example number one, okay? Here in example number one, you've got a straight line graph so we have to determine if, so when you draw a, a vertical line test, it's going to cut this straight line graph once. So you've got a function, right? In other words, you've got one to one function. So here also, when you draw a vertical line test, it's going to cut the graph once. So you've got a function. Here, you're not going to have a function because your gradient is zero here. And then in case of this, when you cut your graph here, it will cut the graph once, so you have got also a function. And then, but here, your vertical line test is going to cut the graph here and here, so it's not a function. So this are uh, some of the graphs, you, you just use a vertical line test, it will cut the graph once, so you have got a function. But in case of this, your vertical line test will cut here and here, meaning that it's not a function. And then also on a circle. So circle, we agree today, circle is not a function, right? Because uh, the, 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 the vertical line test is going to cut the graph twice. It's going to cut the graph here and here. So we say all circles are non-function. Okay, and then we we'll look at function notation. How can you notate a function? So y is equal to f of x means that if you don't want to write f of x, you can write y. If you don't want to write y, you can write g of x, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, let's look at linear function. Some, they call it a straight line graph. Now, this linear functions are given by a general formula, y squared to mx plus plus C. Now let's look what is M. M is the gradient of a line, and then it also indicates the steepness and the direction. So when your M here is positive, or in other words, it's greater than zero, you have got an increasing line. But when your M is less than zero or negative, you have got a sort of decreasing line. But when your M is close to zero, you have got a vertical line. So how do we calculate this M? M is given by change in Y over change in X, which is going to be Y2 minus Y1 
over x2 minus x1. Okay. Now let's look at the C. C is just y intercept whereby x is equal to zero. Okay, very important here. Now let's look at the properties of a straight line. So you can have this straight line which are parallel. So whenever, wherever you find a straight line parallel, just know that they've got the same gradient. So M1 is equal to M2, wherever, whenever. So wherever, whenever a straight line are perpendicular, so in other words, they're forming in 90 degrees. So you've got a, the product of their gradient must be equal to negative one. The product M1 over M2 is equal to negative one. So in case whereby you are given a gradient of a perpendicular line, of one straight line, just know that we just have to solve for M2, make M2 subject to the formula. So the domain and the range, those are X is an element of real number, Y is an element of real number because it's covering you know, all the real numbers. Straight line is covering all the real numbers. Now, let's look at determination determining the equation of a linear function. So what do you do? The steps and now what do you do? So step number one, determine the gradient of a function. Number two, substitute the value of the gradient into the general formula. And then you solve for C, you solve for y-intercept. Write down your equation in the form of f of x is equal to mx plus C. So sketching the linear graph for you to sketch, Steps number one, you must determine the x-intercept. You let your y is equal to zero. I said this one, we call it a, a game rule. So when, you, when you're finding x, your y is equal to zero. When you're finding your y, your y, your x is equal to zero. We call it a hide and seek game. So plot the two points, you go from here and draw the line. You just join the two points with a ruler. Now let's look. At example number two, sketch the linear function f given by. So you've got f of x is equal to 2x plus 4. So here, I said first thing first, you calculate the x-intercept. Then you get to calculate the y-intercept. Then you join the points. OK, this is what we say. You determine the x-intercept, you set f of x equals to 0 or y is equal to 0. Then you solve for x. You have got 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. Then you solve for x. You transfer this positive 4 to the other side. And then your x will be equal to negative 2. So now, determine the y-intercept. Your x will be equal to 0. So f of 0 is equal to 4. So in other words, your coordinates are negative two and zero, and then you have got zero and four. Then you plot the points first, okay? And then after you use the ruler, you join the points. Then this is what function f. Okay, guys, so now, let's look at example number three. Find the equation in the form of f of x, is equal to mx plus c. So here you are given a graph, but you have to go back. You have to come back. You have to come with a, a function, right? So here you are given two points on the straight line. Okay, let's go back. Here you are given two points on the straight line. So the coordinate here is two and zero, and then you have got one and negative one. So you just find the gradient using m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Then you get the, your gradient, and then you substitute your gradient. After substituting your gradient, you substitute the one point here. Then you calculate the value of c. OK. You see, you calculate your gradient, and then your gradient will be 1. Then you substitute your gradient, and then you choose one point from the graph, which is 2 and 0. Then you solve for c. You get it as negative 2, therefore f of x is equal to x minus 2. This should be simple, straightforward. Now we look at quadratic 
functions. Some they say it's called parabolic functions. Okay, now here in quadratic functions, we've got three cases. So if you master all those three cases, you are good. You have to know also the properties of those three cases. Let's look at the case number A of a of a of a case number one. The general formula is given by y squared to ax squared plus bx plus c, whereby your a right will never be equal to zero. So this case number one, we call it a coordinate and the three points. We call it a coordinate and the three points. So in other words, you must be given a coordinate and the three points on the graph. Now, let's look at the properties. What is your a? Your a, this a here, indicate the shape of a parabolic function. When, wherever your a is positive or greater than zero, you've got a happy face. You know, you've got those happy face or concave up. Okay, but wherever you are, so it will be like this. So wherever your a is less than zero, you've got a negative. So in other words, you've got a concave down or a, a set face. Okay, now let's look at, so the set face, it will be facing down. Okay, now let's look at B. The B here, it affects the axis of symmetry and the turning point. This B here, and then sum the equation of axis of symmetry, x squared to minus b over 2a. And then you will see it will be the y-intercept whereby x equals 0. You will see it will be the same as in straight line. Okay, now x-intercepts, this x-intercept, we also call them, another name for x-intercept, we also call them roots or zeros. So for you, we said for you to get the x-intercept, you substitute your y is equal to zero. Now, steps to find the equation, use the formula y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Step number two, one of the given points is the y-intercept from here. Therefore, c is given. You substitute that value. Okay, substitute the coordinates of the other two points into y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, already you've got c, then you, you solve for a and b simultaneously. So quadratic form number two, the general formula, this is case two, very important. y is equal to a into x minus p squared plus q whereby your a will never be equal to zero. So this point, we call it a TP form, a TP form. Let's understand each other here. We call it a TP, a turning point form. Why? Because we're given the turning points, okay? So whenever, wherever you're given the turning points, you use this formula. So your a, you will be, your a will be, indicate the shape of a parabolic function, I said this, a is greater than zero, you've got a heavy face, and your graph will look up, and whenever where A is less than zero, you've got a set face, okay? Very important. And then what is P and Q? I said they are turning points, right? And then X is equal to P, we call it axis of symmetry, remember? I said X is axis of symmetry defined by X is equal to minus B over 2A. Now, very important, Steps to find the equation, use the formula y squared to x minus p squared plus q. Step number two, substitute the coordinates of the turning point pq. So you just substitute p and q, okay? And then substitute the point given, all right? So you'll be given a turning point and a point. Please, here, yeah, don't substitute the turning point again. Are we together? So then you solve for, for a, right? the equation in the form of y is equal to ax minus p squared plus q, right? Or f of x equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, depending on the instruction in the question paper. Now, for the domains, for this all quadratic functions, the domain x will be an element of real number. 
And then for range, it will be y greater or equal to q, right? Which is your turning point. And then y or less than q, which is your turning point. Okay, this should be simple. Let's look at the last case, the last case, case number three, right? Case number three is given by a general form of y squared to a into x minus x1 into x minus x2, whereby your a will never be equal to zero, right? Because if your a is equal to zero, a now you've got a problem here. So this form, we call it a root form. We can just say a root form. So a root form and a point form and a point. So you might just be given x intercepts and some any points in the graph. So for A, we have said it in case the shape of the graph, your A is greater than zero, you've got a B face, you are A less than zero, you've got a set face facing down. Now, what is your x1 and your x2? So those are roots. X1 and x2, those are roots or x intercepts. Now, steps. How do you find the equation of this one? Use the formula y is equal to a into x minus x1 to x minus x2. Then substitute the values of x intercepts here, x1 and x2. Okay, simple. Substitute the given point, which is not the x intercept. So you just substitute any other point. Please don't type the x intercept, any other point. And then you solve for a. Then you write your equation in the form of f of x plus two, a x squared plus b x plus c, because this is a quadratic function. So mostly I will advise you to leave your, your final answer in the quadratic form. Now, quadratic function, we, we have got the nature of roots. How do you find this x intercepts? The roots we're talking about x intercepts. How do we find them? In nature, right? So we have got case number one, whereby we have got real roots. So real roots, sort of a real number roots, right? So your graph, we will touch one x value here and other x value here. So you have got two x intercepts, and also here you have got two x intercepts, right? Whether your graph is a happy face or sad face. Right, I mean the shape of the graph. Okay, now let's look at the equal roots. That's way by your graph, it has got only one x intercept. It's just touching your your x axis once, just touching your x axis, whether it's a happy or sad face. Okay, now we've got non-real roots, non-real roots. So here I said roots, they are x intercepts. So non-real roots, it means that you don't have a x intercepts, right? You don't have roots. So your graph is not rooted. It's not rooted. So now, now this is the case whereby your, your graph is not touching x intercept, and then whereby whether it's a happy or sad, your graph is not touching the x axis. So you can find a graph like this, right? Now let's look at uh, example. Find the equation of f of x. So now, you see now, here, which form is this? Ask yourself. First thing first, you have to ask yourself, which form is this? So is it a case one, is it case two, is it case three? So here you are given x intercept. Here you are given x intercept. So, oh, okay, this is case three. You know, this is case three, you are also given a point. So which means, in other words, you're going to use a formula y is equal to a into x minus x1 into x minus x2. Then you substitute the x intercept point, then you substitute a point, then you solve a, then you write your equation. You substitute your a, then you write your equation. Very simple and straightforward. Now, okay, this is what I was explaining. x1 is equal to negative 1, x2 is equal to 3. These are your roots. These are your x intercepts. So you, are, you write your equation y squared to a into x minus x1 to x minus x2. So you substitute your roots, you substitute your roots. And then when you are done substituting your roots, 
you substitute a point in the graph. So you are given two is to six. So you just, your y will be six and then your x will be two. Then you substitute two plus one to two minus three. Here you got three into negative one, okay? Then negative three a, you divide both sides by negative three, then you get your a as negative two. Now, you substitute your a value and then x minus x1 here, x minus x1 into x minus x plus x minus 3. Okay, then you 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 just substitute and then you simplify here. You simplify here and then you leave the answer in the standard form. This should be this should be simple because you say x multiplied by x, um, x multiplied by negative x, x one multiplied by x, and then one multiplied by negative three. So and then you leave your answer in the standard form. Example number 4.2, find the equation of f of x. So now, so in, in case of this, you remember when I was saying, you've got an idea that your a should be positive, okay? Your, your graph is AP phase, and then you've got an idea that, oh, now it means the roots here, you don't have roots, so this is non-real roots. So these are just properties that we were discussing. And then you've got turning point. So here, which, which case are you going to use? We use a turning point case because you are given a turning point, negative one and two, and then you're also given a point. So this is a TP4. So why you're going to use the formula y is equals to a into x minus p squared plus q, whereby p and q are your turning point substitute simple. Now, I said P and Q, those are your turning points, negative one and two, then you substitute them as they are. Okay, negative one here and two, then you've got X plus one squared plus two, then you substitute a point, it's always to five, they're on the Y axis, right? And then it will be your five is equal to A into zero plus one squared plus two, five is equal to A plus two, three is equal to A. Then you substitute your A value, and then you have got x plus one squared plus two. Then you simplify here. You just simplify here, and then you will arrive here in, on the standard form. This, this is simple, I believe. Now, let's look at the, at the mixture. Here we're looking at the mixture of a straight line and the, and the, and the, and the quadratic functions. Okay, this was a this was a, a question paper. I took it from 2018, right? Last of last year, November exam, 2018, November exam. Now they are saying that we're going to do this problem together. We're going to do this problem together. I'll be writing. So in the diagram below, okay, A and B. A and B are x intercepts it's true of the graph of f of x equals to x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, a straight line G. Okay, a straight line here. G through A, through A, cuts F. Okay, cuts F at C. We are given cuts F at C here. This is the point of intersection. And the y axis at zero is to one. Here, the y axis at zero is to one. M is the point on F. M is a point on F is true. And N is a point on G is true. Such that MN, okay, MN is parallel to y axis. So they're just saying that this line is parallel to the y axis and cuts the x axis at t. It cuts here at x axis at t. So now this graph show that number one, show that g of x is equals to x plus one. So let's look at g of x. G of x is this one. What are you having on the g of x? 
you are given a point here, which is 4 is 2, 5. And then you are also given the y-intercept here. The y-intercept here, which is, so which means that you are seeing is 1 is given from the graph. Okay, and then this point also, so here you are required to calculate the gradient. Okay, now let's, let's do this on the whiteboard. Okay, guys, this is, this is our whiteboard. Hopefully I will be able to write Okay, now let's, so it will be M is equals to Y2 minus Y1 all over by X2 minus x1 okay so now you are given a point um you are coordinates for c you are given c as 4 is 2 5 you've got 4 and 5 and you've got another point as 0 and one okay then for you to get a, a gradient here for you to get a gradient you will have a, a value like um you calculate this will be your you just choose this will be your tools these are your y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 Okay, now you just say five minus one all over by four minus one, which is equals to so five minus one is four, and then it will be four minus. 4 minus 0, which will be 1. Okay, so now you are also given that C is given there in the graph. Your C is equals to, your C is equals to 1. Okay, so therefore, therefore, your Y is equals to MX, MX plus plus c then you substitute the values so your m is one so it's x it should be one multiplied by x k plus plus one okay now let's go back to the question paper here so we're done with number one, two marks. Calculate the coordinate of A and B. Calculate the coordinate of A and B. So where are A, A and B? So this A and B, these are your roots, in other words. So you would agree with me that here at B, the x-intercept, we don't know, but we know that the y-intercept there is zero. Also here, the x-intercept, we don't know, but we know that the y-intercept is zero. So you just say x-intercept when y is equal to zero. Let me help you here. This is how you do it. Um, let me erase this. Okay. Okay, now. Okay, now we see now we see 
x intercepts x intercepts x intercepts okay whereby your y is equals to zero okay so your formula your formula was x squared okay the formula is x squared minus to x minus three is equals to zero this is why so you put zero then you 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 factorize here you factorize here so it means that you are here you've got so what are the factors here you've got x here you've got x okay and then now here you've got you are three and then you've got you are one so here this negative so here it will be negative and then here it will be positive in other words you've got to solve here these are the, just the factors so your x will be equal to your x will be equal to negative one or your x will be three so in other words these are just x intercept so the y values the the y values are zero so you just say your a into negative one so the, this, this, this is the coordinate negative one is two is to zero and then on b this is b it will be three and three and zero so you are good to go okay now let's go back to the second question on the second question does it determine the range of f is it this this is the graph i said this is the graph so for for the range for you to, to get the range you have to know the turning point because the range we talk about those are y values and then the domain those are x values so now you have to find first the what we call the axis of 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 of, of symmetry okay now let's go back you guys find the the axis of symmetry of this function f let's go back okay i can i can do it here okay this was your number two okay now let's look at number three now on number three now let me wrap first here yeah. Okay. Now, on number three, you have to get what we call the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry, and then so now for you the formula to get the exit of symmetry you just say x is equals to minus b over 2a are we together so you are you are you are you are graph so it will be negative you take from you take from the functions b it will be negative into negative two over 
What is the coefficient of a? It's one, right? And then you've got negative one by negative two, so you'll end up having one, right? So now you you have to substitute this value of this is the x inter x intercept of a turning point. So in other words, it's your p. So now you you will substitute this value. It will be f f of f of one, which is equals to which is equals to. Okay, let's say for example, it will be f of x. Let me first x squared. The function was x squared. Okay, x squared minus 2x minus 2x minus 3. Right? So you have f of 1. So you substitute this one there. So you have f of 1 is equals to. So when you substitute one here and one here, you 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 should get negative four. So now for you to get the the range, because your graph is a happy face, your graph is a happy face. In other words, it's concave up. So your range will be y greater or equal to negative four. Are we together? Some they do, some they do like this. They can just say it's negative four, which means negative four. This is the, this is a solid bracket, meaning that it's included and uh, infinite, which is not included. Okay, let's go back to the question. So the second question is then is saying that if mn, so this is the mn, is equal to six. If mn is equal to six, determine the length of OT if t OT 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 if t lies on the negative axis on the negative axis. Show all you are working. Okay, here we just have to determine the length. So this mn, we're given that is equals to mn from here to here, we're given that is six unit. And then you see now this mn is composed of this graph of f of x, this piece of f of, of f of x, and then also this piece of g of x. So it's sort of like this. So now we are given the, the mn. So, so if you subtract, if you subtract this graph minus this graph of G, then you, you should get OT, okay? So now, so in other words, I'm saying that if you subtract the, if you take F of X, then you subtract G of X, this one, you, you, you have shown rule number one, then you equate it to, the length of M, mn. Okay, let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, let's erase first. Okay. Now, I said you take the graph of f, f of x, then you minus the graph of g of x. So now it will be it will be f graph of f minus graph of g, which should be equal to m n. It's true. M n. Right? So now we can do it together. Okay, now what is the function of f? So we say this x squared, x squared minus 2x minus 
to x minus minus 3 minus into so you you minus the graph of g which is x plus 1 x plus 1 which is equal to mn mn is equal to how many units is equal to 6 units so now you will have x squared minus 2x minus 3 so minus x so here i said this plus one right minus one so you take this six inside so it will be minus six which is equal to zero are we together so when you solve this you will have you will have x squared okay you will have x squared minus 3x minus 3x okay minus 10 is equals to zero and then you get the and then you get the the vectors which is equals to zero All right so for the vectors here you're going to have x you're going to have x you're going to have five right are we together you're going to have five vectors of 10 is five and two that will give us negative three so negative is this side and then positive is this side so when you get the when you solve x is equal to five or x is equal to minus two so so this is not the value that we want we're interested here because the same is in the negative side so you will end up having ot ot is equals to two units okay now here your x is equal to negative two so let's go back so this is question number four so now let's go back we are here so they want us to determine n's rather than the coordinates of n what is n n is lies on the graph of g of x so you can just substitute the x value of of ot and then you 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 get the value of y here okay so now we can this is for number one for a and then this will be for two okay your x is equal to negative two so you just say g of x g of negative two it will be equal to so you know that g of x was given by x plus one so it will be negative two plus plus one which is equals to negative one 
So now the coordinate of n, now the coordinate of n, it will be negative two. Negative two is two, negative one. Okay, then you are, you are good to go. Okay, now let's look at the second last question. This is very important. Say determine the equation of a tangent. Determine the equation of the tangent to f. So to f drawn to g. So the tangent is the is the line that cuts the graph of f once. So it's going to to be sort of like this. The line is going to be like this. So, but that line will be sort of parallel to to g of x. So that tells you that if I said if the, the, the lines are parallel, in other words, they've got the same what? Same gradient, right? So already we know the gradient of the tangent, that the gradient of the tangent is the gradient of the g, which is equals to one. Okay. Now let's erase first. Let's erase. Okay. Now, the tangent, tangent I said, is a, is a line that, um, that will touch the graph of, of x once, right? Okay. Now, yeah, our whiteboard is clean now. So now, here, what we're going to do is number, number five. Okay, so for us, for us to get the, 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 the tangent or the gradient of the tangent, we have to get the first derivative of that graph. Okay, so the first derivative which will be f first derivative f of x. which will be equal to f of x, which will be equal to 2x minus minus 2. And then we know that that's equal to gradient. And then the gradient, we know that is parallel to the graph of g. So which is equals to one. So now we can say 2x minus 2 is equals to 1. Then you have to solve for, for x. So you are 2x is equals to 3. Therefore, you divide both sides by two, your x will be equal to three over, over two. So when you are here, you just have to substitute this value in the original, original graph, right? Okay, so it will be f, the graph of f, the original of it before we get the first derivative. So it will be f of 3 over 2. So when we substitute this value in the original graph, you, you must get something like negative 15 over over 4. So the point here, you know that now the point is x is 3 over 2, 3 over 2, and your y is negative 15 over negative 15 over. Over 
over four, right? Okay, so now, now you you must you must write the equation is the equation of a set line is y is equals to m x plus let's see you are given you are given the gradient is one so you've got a point so let's substitute the point so it will be negative 15 to negative 15 over four which is equals to your gradient m is one so it will be one into what is your x three over two three over two right plus plus c then when you solve there you'll get your c equal to your c will end up being equal to negative 21 over 4 negative 21 over 4 then you can write your equation as y is equals to you've got the gradient there your gradient is one which is x one x minus c which is negative 21 over over four right now this is the equation of the of the tangent so let's go back to the last question here yeah, doesn't that for what values of k right will the graph of of f of x is minus 2x minus 3 and h of x x plus k will not intersect so these two graphs will not or the graph these two graph will not intersect whereby and we got the the c the k intercept there is negative so it will not inter intercept at the i can write it here so this will be number six so this graph will not intersect whereby the k is going down the k is going down it will be this value here we just take the k here as this value k less than negative 21 over over 4 right so because when this line is sort of they will not intersect when this line is very down there it's very down there so that will not intersect but when the k is trying to go up it will touch it will intersect so now let's look we're done with this question this is your homework guys it's very simple you are just given a sketch of a parabolic functions and a graph g of x g of x is this one so here you are given the x intercept rather than the coordinate of d where is d d is here okay d is here so you know that you'll get d okay rather than the coordinate of d if d is the image of b where is b b is this one here has been translated two units to the right simple just x plus two three plus five so this simple determine the equation of g g is this one so you've got two points you've got c and the d here so you get the gradient solve for c determine the equation of the graph of f of so you're given the x intercept so it should be simple we've talked about this and a point here you can substitute this point here so you use the you're given the x intercept so you'll use y squared to a into x minus x1 x minus x2 this is simple and then determine the coordinate of e it's just the 
This one, you can also get it by equating the two graphs. You just equate this and this, then you solve. Okay. Now, this is your quiz. Also, this is simple. Determine the coordinate of S. Where is S? S is here. You are given the graph of H of X. Here, this is the graph of H of X. Determine the, this is simple. Equation of K. The K is this one. So you are given the turning point. Use the turning point formula. Y squared to A into X minus P squared plus Q. So if K is equal to this, determine the coordinate of T. T is a point of intersection. You equate the two graphs here, K and H of X. Determine the values of X followed by K of X is less than. So K of X is this one. So K of X will be less than here, going this side, going up there, and then also this side going down there. So this is simple. So you have to write it and submit. If you've got any question, you will send on the comments. I will help you. And then, thank you guys. We will be together again on part two of these functions, whereby we'll look at uh, hyperbolic functions and uh, exponential functions and the inverse, okay? Don't forget to like our page, share, subscribe. Thank you guys. Okay.